Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from My Progression and this video is about preparing for an inspection. There's no doubt about it, everyone who works in education in England has heard the word Ofsted. And if you're Welsh, Eston. ETI for our Northern Ireland viewers and Education Scotland for our Northern neighbours. When you hear the word inspection, you may be filled with fear and dread. Perhaps it makes you feel anxious and causes you stress. You may feel extremely nervous. On the other hand, some embrace the opportunity to prove that their school and their teaching is the best that it can be and the service provided by the school is to be celebrated. You may be a bit of both, but we want you to be prepared and ready. And honestly, is one inspection going to impact your teaching in the long term? No, but it's nice to have some bragging rights when the school is graded outstanding. Do what you do to the best of your ability and take on board any advice given to improve your practice. Continually develop and improve. This video is going to take you through the different types of inspections throughout the UK, how to use marginal gains to prepare for an inspection, and what to expect if it's your first time. So what type of inspections do we have in the UK? You can trace back the first official school inspections to 1833. I would think the format will have been quite different. It was actually John Major's government in 1992 who decided to introduce a national scheme of inspections through a reconstituted HMI, which became known as the Office for Standards in Education. Ofsted aims to improve lives by raising standards in education and children's social care. We inspect and regulate thousands of organisations and individuals providing education, training and care, from childminders to training providers, schools to local authorities, and we share what we find. Good to outstanding schools will be inspected every four years, as long as they maintain this standard. Schools rated as requiring improvement will be re-inspected within 30 months. As of September 22, due to COVID, some inspections are running up to 18 months behind. Then we have Eston. Eston is the Education and Training Inspectorate for Wales. Its name comes from the Welsh verb Eston, meaning to reach out, stretch or extend. Its function is to provide an independent inspection and advice service on quality and standards in education and training provided in Wales. Eston will inspect schools once within an eight year period. ETI, the Education and Training Inspectorate, is a unitary inspectorate and part of the Department of Education, providing independent inspection services and policy advice in Northern Ireland. The ETI aims to visit schools outside the full inspection or follow-up process approximately every three years. Education Scotland is a Scottish government executive agency responsible for supporting quality and improvement in Scottish education. Schools are inspected on a proportionate basis using a sampling approach rather than a cyclical model. They use predetermined criteria to select an annual sample of 120 schools to enable them to provide evidence for the National Improvement Framework. Preparing for an inspection. The main rule of preparing for an inspection, keep the children at the heart of all that you do. The children are the most important people in your care and you're making a difference. Care for them and nurture them. Treat the children in your class the way you'd want your own children to be treated. I like that benchmark. Each individual school is aware of the timescale relating to when an inspection is due. And there's no disputing the fact that the atmosphere, workload and expectations will shift slightly in this lead up to the awaited phone call saying they're coming. This warning is given to ensure that required staff are available to support the inspection. A little notice is better than none to allow refining and some preparation. However, it's far better to be prepared at all times, constantly maintaining high standards of teaching along with high expectations of the children you teach. This attitude will limit a rise in stress levels when the call comes. 
if you consider this diagram. This line represents your own teaching standard. And there you are doing a good job. This is when you get that call and the expectation of your standards increases dramatically. That sudden increase in expectation will often lead to a stressful environment. Whilst we can agree we want to limit the stress in daily life, the increase in standards can only be a good thing. So where does that standard go after the inspection? Does it gradually go back to where you were comfortable? Do you go straight back to where things were before? Or do you maintain that new standard? If you don't maintain the standard, then what happens when you have another inspection? And another, and another. Your stress level is increasing every time. Whereas if you maintained your high standards throughout, you won't need to worry. Now, I know that the expected workload is already extremely high and you do all work really hard. So when I'm talking about raising the standard, I'm not talking about necessarily increasing your workload. Sometimes you can use marginal gains to completely revolutionise what you're doing. Consider Sir Dave Brailsford. James Clear describes his use of the 1% gain to improve British cycling in his excellent book, Atomic Habits. Brailsford had been hired to put British cycling on a new trajectory. What made him different from previous coaches was his relentless commitment to a strategy that he referred to as the aggregation of marginal gains, which was the philosophy of searching for a tiny margin of improvement in everything you do. Brailsford said the whole principle came from the idea that if you broke down everything you think of that goes into riding a bike and then improve it by 1%, you'll get a significant increase when you put them all together. Brailsford and his coaches began by making small adjustments you might expect from a professional cycling team. They redesigned the bike seats to make them more comfortable, rubbed alcohol gel on tyres for a better grip, they asked riders to wear electrically heated overshorts to maintain ideal muscle temperature while riding and used biofeedback sensors to monitor how each athlete responded to a particular workout. The team tested various fabrics in a wind tunnel and had their outdoor riders switch to indoor racing suits, which proved to be lighter and more aerodynamic. But they didn't stop there. Brailsford and his team continued to find 1% improvements in overlooked and uninspected areas. They tested different types of massage gels to see which one led to the fastest muscle recovery. They hired a surgeon to teach each rider the best way to wash their hands to reduce the chances of catching a cold. They determined the type of pillow and mattress that led to the best night's sleep for each rider. They even painted the inside of the team truck white, which helped them spot little bits of dust that would normally slip by unnoticed, but could degrade the performance of the finely tuned bikes. As these and hundreds of other small improvements accumulated, the results came faster than anyone could have imagined. Just five years after Brailsford took over, the British cycling team dominated the road and track cycling events at the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing, where they won an astounding 60% of the gold medals available. Four years later, when the Olympic Games came to London, the Brits raised the bar as they set nine Olympic records and seven world records. We'll have a look at some practical examples where you can implement the 1% in the next section of the video. But this will be very unique to each person as it's about looking at what you're currently doing and refining it. Be organised in advance. If you start thinking about how to improve your standards now, then that sharp incline will become a slower and more manageable ascent. What can you control now that will raise your standard? And where can you add that 1%? Let's start with your classroom environment. Make sure your classroom environment is reflecting the high standard of your teaching. The first thing you should do is walk in as if you are an inspector. Where would your eyes go? Are your display boards telling a story about you and your teaching? Keep on top of them and if they need some titivating, take the opportunity to do it. Set a time to do this so it becomes a habit Maybe you could do this task every Monday morning with fresh eyes, assessing anything needed restapling on. 
Are the borders still intact? Just spend a couple of minutes tidying them up. Here's one for your 1%. If you find that things keep falling down, use four staples instead of three. If there's a section that always gets damaged when people walk past, move it. Limit the work you need to do to keep it looking polished. Think about a classroom setup. Are you happy with where the children are sitting? Can they all see the board clearly? Is your layout conducive to learning? These are the little but important things as you want all eyes on you when teaching. And also you want all children to be comfortable when they're taking on board new information. Sit in various seats to see how you would feel in that position in your classroom. Sounds silly, but it's a big one. Know your children. As an educator, your responsibility is to teach the children in your care and monitor their progress and attainment. You need to know your class or classes and be aware of their individual needs. Who are your SCN children? Who have an EHCP? Are you aware of those needs and targets and how to meet them? Have you got any looked after children? Make sure your plans always include the necessary differentiation. Keep on top of marking an assessment. Keep your books marked and up to date in line with the school marking policy. Remember, inspectors will be scrutinising the work. Try to keep up to date and mark effectively and efficiently. See our My Progression video on marking to help you identify some 1% changes you could implement here as well. And whilst you're there, like and subscribe to keep hearing more from My Progression. For Ofsted, it's usual practice for them to ask for a selection of books to be assessed. A top, middle and less able range is a standard request. You may have control over whose books are used, but this could be random. How do you know that your students are on track with their academic progress? There will be a school assessment tracker, but feel free to keep your own log using an Excel spreadsheet or similar program that you can easily access to keep you knowledgeable and aware. Okay, you've had the call. Senior management will play a big part in getting the school inspection ready. Take on board any feedback and embrace this training. Feedback from observations can guide you to improvement. It can be stressful, I fully understand that. We do this to children each day and encourage them to learn from mistakes and constructive feedback, so we should be fine. As a class teacher, you'll no doubt be anxious and nervous about strangers coming into your classroom. However, this is your space and you've already ensured it's reflecting your high standard, so prepare the way. Tell the children you have important visitors in school and they may be popping in. Ask the children how they think the classroom should be when the visitors pop in. Basically, get them to help you keep it tidy. Make your planning accessible so that if they come round 15 minutes in, they can put what's happening into context or see where the lesson is heading after they leave. They may do a whole lesson observation or as little as 10 minutes of it. Embrace the opportunity to show the inspectors how good you are. Do what you do, and do it well. Some schools may need to change the timetable to free up certain members of staff, but generally you will teach your timetabled lessons. If you're prepared and organised for that week, don't change anything. What is their focus? Knowing what the inspectors are looking for from their observations will be helpful. Schools have a school improvement plan based off the last inspection. This should be available to all staff and you should be aware of the focus. So rather than having to improve everything all at once, just making sure you're all over those targets probably means you're heading in the right direction. The inspector's inquiries will be based on this. So if one area was to increase the boys' engagement in reading, they'd be talking to the boys about their reading and looking in the class library. Inspectors will use triangulation in their assessment so they'll only need to make a judgement on three pieces of evidence. Normally, it's three from any of the following. Looking at books, speaking to learners, speaking to staff, looking at documentation, looking at planning, looking at saved evidence like a portfolio of pupils' work. 
an Ofsted inspector will make key judgments about the following areas. Overall effectiveness, effectiveness of leadership and management, quality of teaching, learning and assessment, personal development, behaviour and welfare, outcomes for pupils. Interviews with staff. What questions could you be asked? They will ask you a range of questions, but some examples are, how do you work to promote the British values? What should you be looking out for if a child spends a long time away from the setting? How do you report a safeguarding issue? What would be some warning signs for you that there was a safeguarding issue with one of your key children? To brush up on your safeguarding knowledge, see our series on safeguarding. Prepare your children for visitors. Inspectors will definitely speak to the children in school, some in an informal way whilst they're in the classroom. They're very likely to ask the children, what are you learning today? Or what's your learning intention or objective? And how will you know if you're successful in your learning? This will need to match the lesson objective and activity for them to judge if the students are engaged and on track. Other pupils will be asked to attend a more formal meeting with the inspectors where they'll be questioned about various aspects of school life. It's generally left to the class teacher to select the children, so choose with care. It might be worth reminding them of the wonderful trips they've had, the after school clubs that are available and how safe they feel in school because we've just done the Internet Safety Week. Inspections can be seen in both a positive and negative light. There's no getting away from the fact that an inspection of your setting will take place at some point. Being prepared as best you can, well before the event occurs, will only help to ease the stress. Maintaining that high standard throughout your practice will allow you to confidently face the inspection every time and will likely improve your whole teaching practice. We want this video to be as useful as possible. And if you have any tips or advice from your own experiences, then please leave them in the comments below. I've been Natalie from My Progression, and if you've enjoyed this video on preparing for inspection, then like and subscribe to keep seeing more from My Progression. And let's keep your career in motion.